Hey, what's up, everybody? Fred Mindek here, and today I'm going to be doing something pretty special, pretty unique. I'm actually going to be picking a barrel uh, from Pinhook. Now, I normally include, like, so this barrel that I'm picking is for my whiskey club, Club Marzipan. Uh, I offer up first crack at an exclusive barrel in this club, and unfortunately, I this was this is such a time crunch the retailer was like hey man we're sending you a box if you can get us your your results uh, of what your what your favorite is for the barrel pick uh we can have that to you by you know x date so this is probably this barrel will actually probably hit in like october november or something like that but i'm at the mercy of their timetable and that's just how it is sometimes you work with retailers the distillers uh, they have their own schedule. They don't give two shits about your schedule. That being said, uh, this is uh, something I'm really excited about. By the way, if you want to become a member of Club Marzipan, just go check it out. I'll tell you a little bit about it. We do a lot of exclusive content. I give a lot of history uh, on there. Uh, they get uh, exclusive reviews. Uh, we also have a taste camp. We have tastings every month together. So I'm training people how to taste like professionals. And we're also just getting on Zoom calls once a month, tasting and having a good time. So that's a little bit about what Club Marzipan is. So now let me get into this box here and let's see what it's all about. Now, I've actually never done a, um, I've never done a pin hook barrel pick before. So there could be a big surprise in here for me that I'm not ready for. Like this box being a bitch. Aha, here we go. Oh, wow. Oh, these are all eight years old. Look at that. Let's take a look at that. All eight years old. That's a good looking, that's a good looking sample kit right there. That is what I'm talking about. Great packaging. And like I said, I normally have my uh, members uh, with me on this. And um, I'm kind of I'm kind of bummed that I don't. But uh, I, I have to get this picked. And I need to I figured, you know what, I'm really behind on providing good YouTube content, so might as well, might as well make a uh, tasting video out of this, right? Two birds with one stone. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so these are uh, MGP, eight-year MGP from Pinhook. Actually, let me just double confirm that because it doesn't have the state on these little sample bottles. Um. Tasting now, this is MG, is MGP, correct? It's freaking, you know what, spell check over here, correcting my MGP to map. I don't need to be, you don't need to correct me on that. I'm a writer, it's MGP. I hate autocorrect, I hate it. All right, so, um, what I like to do, how I like to pick my barrels, um, I envision every whiskey that I pick pairing with a steak. Yeah, uh, just double confirmation. These are eight-year-old MGP from Pinhook. So that's Indiana bourbon. A little history for you on that distillery. It's a for former Seagram's plant that was purchased by Pernod Ricard uh, after Seagram's folded in the early 2000s. Then uh, Angostura Bitters, parent company, um, purchased it. They went, uh, basically went bankrupt or belly up, didn't go bankrupt, but they got really hurt in the, in the global economic crisis in 2008 timeframe. MGP ingredients acquired that distillery in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Uh, that facility had been used for basically as blending properties for a lot of the Seagram's products. And, uh, then it became a source whiskey seller and MGP really did, you know, flipped the script and started like providing a lot of old bourbon and rye to smaller distillers, to independent bottlers. 
uh, to blenders, and then they started their own brands like George Remus. So uh, MGP is without a doubt that Lawrenceburg, Indiana distillery is, is pound for pound as good as the Kentucky distilleries. So that's not just my opinion. That's a lot of critics. It's a lot of blind tastings out there. So here we go. We're going to start with, um, let's see how they label these. Okay. So they label these by a uh, serial number. This is eight, nine. I'm tasting here. Eight, nine, seven, seven. Okay, kind of eight nine seven seven. The nose is kind of off putting. Oh, just right away, I, I don't like this nose. It smells moldy. Yeah, I don't like the flavor. I don't like the flavor of this one either. It's very tart, very um, it's got a lot of oak in there. It's like over tannin, so it's got way too much tannins in it. Um, but the the moldiness on the nose is something I really do not like. There's a lot of things that can cause moldiness. I can't really get into all of that, but it just it smells like molded grain on the nose. So I will not be picking eight nine seven seven uh, seven seven eight nine seven seven. You ain't in my heaven. I'll be here all day. All right, so now let's go to 8983. Let's get this other guy right out of here. Ooh, that's more like it. Caramel, a little creme brulee, vanilla. And it looks like these come from the same lot. And it's just amazing. It's just a, a never-ending story of how two barrels can... A, be filled on the same day, age next to each other for eight solid years, and taste completely different, smell completely different. It's it's such a mystery of whiskey. Ooh. Yeah, that, that caramel is really shining through. Oh, yeah. Me likey. It's got some. It's got some punch to it. A lot of spice here. A lot of pepper. A lot of nutmeg. A lot of cinnamon. But that caramel never goes away. It's kind of right there in that middle of the tongue, toward the back, uh, which is odd for me because I usually get caramel on the tip of my tongue. So I think a good way to explain it is like this caramel is kind of like got some spice like molded into it. So it's kind of like a package of like a dessert that's got some nice spiciness to it really do like this one uh i don't say i won't say that i am in like super love with it but i could pick this one and be extremely happy so let's see what we have next all right so now we have a different lot this is 15 g27 Serial number is 10379. There we go. 10379. There we go. Look at that. Look at that serial number. Oh. I already have it poured. I was about to pour it off my game here. Oh, it's got that same big caramel bomb nose. But this one feels like it's a little bit more advanced. There's some hints, hints of tobacco there. There's some like... Uh, Roasted pine nuts. God dang. Mm. Very similar approach to the last one in that the caramel is really mid palate for me, going toward the back as a as a as there's an explosion of spice. The big difference here is like I get this kind of secondary note of cornbread with like a little honey butter to it. Now, if you've been following me for a while, if you've been watching, reading my work or um, paying attention to these videos, you know, um, in my heart, I'm a kid and my grandma, grandpa's with grandpa pulling out um, 
pulling out cornbread, jiffy jiffy cornbread, cast iron skillet, you know, throwing a you know, a heaping amount of butter on there and then uh putting a little honey. You know, that's how I grew up and I looked forward to that all the time as a kid going out hunting with my grandpa. I knew I'd get good cornbread with uh with honey and butter. And when I taste that, it takes me back to that moment. And so anytime you find, if there's a flavor or a note that you just love and it takes you back to that moment, that's what whiskey is about. It's about taking you to moments. And that's where my, the taste mindfulness comes in. It's about connecting your palate to your brain. And this just took me back to one of the happiest moments of my life. And that's going hunting with my grandpa, coming home and having cornbread. You know, it's, it's right here. So I'm going to taste these again. Even even the um, 8977 to make sure, but I think I'm pretty sure I know which direction I'm going. Yeah, I just, my God, that doesn't smell like moldy. Oof. I don't know what the hell that is. Yeah, that first one is not nearly in the league of the other two. Boy, I tell you what, that spice on number eight, I'm sorry, um, 8983, that spice coming through is just spectacular. I, I find myself, I find myself really, really liking that spice and caramel combo. The caramel spice combo for memory from the last one is uh, a little bit more intense than the 10379. I'm going to taste, so I'm going to taste that 10379 just one more time. Different lot numbers, by the way. Oh, God, that caramel is just so beautiful. So I'm in a bit of a pickle. I'm in a bit of a pickle. The 10379 is what I would be drinking all day long. That's the one. It's delicious. I find it to be true to form for the style of whiskey I love. And I cannot stress this enough that connection to that that personal moment of that cornbread note uh and that shines through in this but it's got it's got a lot of caramel to it it's got a lot of spice to it but i'm not i'm not so sure that the other one 8983 would be more appreciated by other tasters i think that if this was a panel 8983 with its complexity of spice um would probably be preferred. I don't know. Let me taste it one more time. I'm going to try to be as unbiased as I possibly can. But then again, it's my barrel pick. I think I should pick what I like. Am I right? Well, I mean, I like both of them. I don't like that one. That first one stunk. All right, I made my decision. One zero three seven nine will be my barrel pick from Pinhook. It is absolutely delicious. I love it, and it was pretty much it's pretty much a tie between the two barrels. And I'm going with what I personally like. So the one zero three seven nine has that edgy cornbread honey and uh, butter note as well as the caramel and the spice the spice and caramel are not as complex as the 8983 but you know this is my barrel pick and i gotta pick i gotta pick with what you know i know i'm going to drink at home and what i want to give as gifts and be able to talk about uh, as a note 
But if you don't like cornbread, if you don't like honey, if you don't like butter, first of all, I don't know why you're drinking American whiskey, but this, this one's not going to be for you. But that's going to do it. If you want a chance at buying this, make sure you head on over to uh, Club Marzipan and become a member. Uh, there's several tiers there with uh, some options open. Uh, I do not um, increase the levels. They just kind of stay the same. So I don't open it up. Um, I probably never will. So, uh, But that's going to be it. That's going to do it here for this uh, barrel tasting. Thank you for uh, to Pinhook for the samples. I cannot wait to get this one in my hands, bottled up and ready to give out as gifts and taste a whole bunch more. But that's going to do it, y'all. Be safe out there. Remember, vodka sucks unless it's being used to clean up a dead cat murder. Cheers. <laughs>